I am confused. Being philosophically consistent and being a very honest person, I'm sure you can tell me where God came from. And in addition, in addition, once you've told me where God comes from, uh, please try to clarify how you can figure that a spiritual force can have an impact on a material universe to create it. I think that some years ago we already talked about that kind of thing in uh, philosophical circles at any rate by posing the question if angels are made of uh, spiritual matter and a pen is made of material matter and spiritual matter displaces no space how many angels can dance on the tip of a pen? <laughs> I have a sense of sort of uh, uh, reversal experience here but, but please do, go ahead you got five minutes. Now, I just want to know which question. That's all right. You may take the rest of the minute. We're supposed to do one question at a time. Which one would you like? That was part of the format for the debate. So, which, which question? I want you to fill in the story of the rest of the uh, beginning of the universe. God, spiritual matter, impact on material matter. Okay. So, two questions. All right. Go ahead. All right, your question, where did God come from, assumes that you're thinking of the wrong, uh, obviously it displays that you're thinking of the wrong God, because the God of the Bible d is not affected by time, space, or matter. If he's, if he's affected by time, space, or matter, he's not God. Time, space, and matter is what we call a continuum. All of them have to come into existence at the same instant, because if there were matter but no space, where would you put it? If there were matter and space but no time, when would you put it? You cannot have time, space, or matter independently. They have to come into existence simultaneously. The Bible answers that in ten words. In the beginning, there's time. God created the heaven, there's space, and the earth. There's matter. So you have time, space, matter created, a trinity of trinities there. Just, you know, time is past, present, future. Space has length, width, height. Matter has solid, liquid, gas. You have a trinity of trinities created instantaneously. And the God who created them has to be outside of them. If he's limited by time, he's not God. The guy who created this computer is not in the computer. He's not running around in there changing the numbers on the screen, okay? The God who created this universe is outside of the universe. He's above it, beyond it, in it, through it. He's, he's unaffected by it. So for, and the, I, the concept that a, of a spiritual uh, force cannot have any effect on a material body, well then I guess you'd have to explain to me things like emotions and love and hatred and envy and jealousy and, and rationality. I mean, if your brain is just a random collection of chemicals that form by chance over billions of years, how on earth can you trust your own reasoning processes and the thoughts that you, you think? Okay? So, um, I, your, your question, where did God come from, is assuming a limited God. And that's your problem. The God that I worship is not limited by time, space, or matter. If I could fit the infinite God in my three-pound brain, he would not be worth worshiping, that's for certain. So that's the God that I worship. Thank you. وروح الله يرف على وجه الياه وقال الله ليكن نور فكان نور ورأى الله النور أنه حسن وفصل الله بين النور والظلمة ودعا الله النور نهارا والظلمة دعانا ليلا وكان مساء وكان صباح يوما واحدا If the Big Bang Theory is true, then I would like to know what exploded and where did it come from and where did the energy come from and where did the space come from for the matter to expand into and where did the organization come from and where did the information come from? There's a whole host of questions that are a whole lot harder for you to answer than in the beginning God. Where is it, where's information come from? Man, is, this universe is not just random molecules circulating around. I mean, it, it, it carries information. Just like a book is so much more than ink on a paper. It carries information. And the DNA is more than just chemicals. It's information. So the evolutionist never answers the question, where did this information come from? Where did the energy come from? Where did the matter itself come from? And you gripe about my belief. I, I believe by faith in the beginning God. I know I, I admit I don't understand that. But you believe hundreds of things by faith. You don't even understand that you're believing by faith. You think matter is either eternal or can create itself. 
What's the two choices? How did matter get here? The world is here. How, where did the matter come from? Did it just happen by itself? Or is it all just imaginary? We're not really here at all. You're faced with the option of, we're not really here. This is all just our imagination. Or, it had a beginning. Or, matter is eternal, which is in vi both, both of the second two options are in violation of the obvious laws of thermodynamics. Matter doesn't create itself. And everything degrades over time, so either it had a beginning or it didn't. If it had a beginning, then what was before the beginning? I mean, there's so many thousands of things you take by faith. You say, I say in the beginning, God, and you say, well, this matter somehow either was always here or created itself, and then this matter somehow became alive, and then this first living thing learned how to reproduce, and then it learned how to make something other than its kind. I mean, even though nobody's ever seen that, nobody's ever seen a dog produce a non-dog. Or You mentioned about, you know, the dog fact that a wolf and a, a fox and a dog coming from a common ancestor in, off Noah's Ark in only 4,400 years. For heaven's sake, you believe they came from a rock. I mean, come on. I don't think my theory is that silly at all. So. Uh, if my answer to your question is still the same. I believe in the beginning God. I do take that by faith. Here's the major difference, major difference that I don't think you're going to understand. I admit mine is a religion. They do not admit theirs is a religion. They want you to think what they believe is science and all of you should pay for their religion to be taught in this university. And that's the situation we have today, and that's unfortunate. There have always been situations where the majority taught something. I mean, in the Soviet Union 15 years ago, if you stood up and said, Hey kids, I don't believe in communism. I think capitalism is a better system. You would be in Siberia if you survived. And here in Emory University, if you stood up in your classroom and said, I don't believe this evolution theory is true. I think it's pretty obvious there must have been a designer to this system. You would be in intellectual Siberia. You would lose your job. It has happened to hundreds of teachers, just simply for standing up and saying, look, I think the evidence is here, folks. There must have been a designer. If I asked you to explain how computers came to be, but you cannot use man as your answer, I only want a purely naturalistic explanation for the origin of computers. Purely naturalistic. The answer has to lie within the computer. How did these molecules get together? How did this data get together? How did these plastic molecules come together and the, and the, the different uh, silicone chips? How did it happen? Your answer has to lie in the computer. I've already eliminated the only obvious answer to the problem at the beginning by my definition. They're trying to eliminate the only answer, to, the only logical answer to the question by their definition of science. They want to define science as things that we can observe and test and demonstrate in the natural world. Okay, well then that eliminates both evolution and creation. Both are unobserved. We don't see anything change. We don't see anything created from nothing. Here's the problem. Both creation and evolution are religious. I admit mine's a religion. They don't admit theirs is a religion. And all of us are paying for their religion to be taught in the school system. And I, for one, resent that. So my answer is still the same, God, God did, it. did it. في غش يعني وفي ناس على طول من فتحة على كل شيء تخيلوا حالته الغبي يصدق كل شيء فعلا غبي كتار بغشوا كلمة الله من أيام الرسول بولس طب وين صرنا هلا دي صار في علينا هل نصدق كل شيء هل نصدق تعليم بدون تقوى بدون طاعة بدون مهابة بدون احترام لوصايا الرب الأرواح مضلة تعاليم شياطين لكن انتبه انت فكر الأخوة وذكرهم وكون خادم صالح ليسوع المسيح عم بيحكي بعدد خمسة متربيا بكلام الإيمان والتعليم الحسن الذي تتبعته انتبه لهيدا التعليم شو خصوصيته هيدا التعليم بقول الخرافات الدنسة العجائزية فرفضها وروّد نفسك للتقوى واحد تيموثاوس أربعة سبعة روّد نفسك للتقوى درب حالك على أنه تكون تقي تخشع وتهاب وتحترم وتكرم وصايا الرب هاي معناتها 
لأن الرياضة الجسدية نافعة لقليل لكن التقوى نافعة لكل شيء